Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. I've just purchased 2,500 more shares in AduroClean Technology. It's really one of the most exciting companies that I cover. This is going to be a longer video, okay? We're going to get into some of the numbers on how we can expect the next four years of Aduro's uh, evolution to unfold. We've talked about a lot about this company, about the technology. We know the technology works. The question now is how are they going to evolve? How are they going to scale up? Um, what do they need to put in place over the next four years to ensure that they have that path to profitability? And I think I'll demonstrate in this video that the path to profitability is significantly easier than what they're being given credit for now, uh, being that a lot of companies are really falling on deaf ears. I, I think the val current valuation with Aduro is a disconnect in the market. I, I think it's a severe disconnect in the value proposition that should be awarded now um, that is not. Uh, currently trading at about 45 million U.S. Uh, market cap. The difficulty in the access in uh, achieving a share base in AduroClean Technologies is going to be discussed in this video. I'm going to give you guys the brokerages that you can actually seek out here in the States, those brokers that you can actually acquire a uh, starting position. Uh, make no mistake, the idea here is to educate. Educate and bring awareness. All right. 46% of this company is owned by insiders. They already know what I am looking to share with you. You are already behind the eight ball, okay? This is a story that is the calm before the storm, okay? Everything that we are going to talk about in this has been put forward by Aduro's new investing presentation, which is about five days old. I look to share that immediately after the release, and it is absolutely chucker blocked full of information. OK, Aduro has partnered with the Independent Investor Channel to provide this awareness uh, profiling of the company. Uh, and I'd like to invite you to the disclaimers in the description below, as well as my current share count with the days of shares purchased, the entry price and the amount of the shares purchased. I now sit on 27,500 shares. I do not bat an eye. Aduro is an easy company to invest in. Uh, I know that the money that's been invested over the last 10 years to bring this technology to the place right now that it is in is very exciting, only to be dismissed by the current volatility in the stock market. And I think this calm before the storm is shortly going to wear out. And I think the value proposition and the partnership that's just been released within the last couple of months being selected by the Shell Game Changer program is going to ensure that we have a partner with big industry to ensure that this path to commercialization that I talk about throughout the statistics of reviewing this investor slide deck and how achievable that is by, by achieving their first 10 units uh, through the licensing proposition that Aduro brings to the table. So guys, sit back, enjoy the video, learn a little bit. This company is on the cutting edge of really paying forward their technology to an industry that is absolutely thirsty. They are absolutely thirsty and starving for solutions to be brought to bear to a problem that is a global problem. It is a global problem that has been swept into the landfills, no pun intended, for many, many years and is now coming out in the public limelight and public customers as well as big industry are demanding change in seeking out a circular economy. Guys, please enjoy. And awareness is key here when we're talking about Aduro Clean Technologies. Welcome to the investor presentation here. Hot off the press, uh, this has been updated within the last week, and I thought I would um, go through this uh, to update uh, the Aduro Clean Technology story here. Very exciting in 2023 with the milestones that have been met by the company. But moreover, I think in the coming years into 2024 and 2025, we are going to be reflecting upon this time as the calm before the storm. And I want to bring as much awareness to this uh, company uh, for those that are interested in the plastic recycling space, for those that have a general interest in understanding the, the, the massive problem that Aduro is looking to solve in the plastic recycling space, as well as their other verticals, Aduro's technology has been proven to work here. And the idea now is to smartly scale up the Aduro opportunity 
and bring it to the mass market. And Enduro is doing a fantastic job and they've provided us some insights for investors and those that are interested and in follow the Enduro clean technology story. Uh, some insight on the progress that has been made uh, over the last short 12 months, which has seen some incredible catalysts that have been reached and achieved by Aduro through uh, funding, uh, through the acceptance and the Game Changer program. We've covered that. None of it's moved the needle. None of it. And I really want to bring everybody's attention to the fact that Aduro Clean Technologies trades on just a few select brokers, that of which I will provide in the description for you. It's one of the number one questions that I get uh, about Aduro. Um, just for full disclosure, I am a share owner in the company. I've just recently added another 2,500 share block to my existing position, which rounds out my share uh, count at 25, uh, 27,500 shares. Those blocks of buys and the entry points that I have purchased, uh, I will leave in the description below for you guys. The reason for that is to provide full transparency. Um, I know sometimes it gets a little bit misconstrued as a YouTuber that I'm somehow pumping stock. Um, I share stories on very, very few companies, companies that I believe in, and furthermore, companies like Aduro that I actually put my own money to work in. And the idea here is not to hype a stock. The idea here is to share with an audience where a company is currently, where the information can be found, uh, so that investors can educate themselves up uh, on their own, because I would safely presume that the masses out there have no idea that Aduro Clean Technologies even exists. I didn't before it was brought to me uh, early, and this company has done nothing but really hang in nicely in the face of volatile markets here. And I want to make sure that all the investors that are interested in the story and would be patrons to the message are being provided as much forward information at a time where it's very, very convenient to dismiss names like this because of the stock action. I think that can be a very costly mistake. I think by not looking at true value and then either making an informed decision to dismiss an opportunity or to take a position in an opportunity is only made possible through education. And that is the sheer intent of providing this information as disclosed by and conveyed by Aduro Clean Technologies. And we'll look to interpret the corporate presentation just released a few d days back by Aduro Clean Technologies. Let's get into it. And the theme here for Aduro is um, notoriety. Um, they are getting some significant notoriety in paying their uh, story forward. And I commend Aduro for um, these accomplishments here that um, uh, are, are new to this new investor presentation that they have uh, championed on this one slide for those that follow the story. But you can see here uh, in Plastic Technology, Forbes Magazine, Advancements uh, with Ted Danson, as well as Hydrocarbon Processing, um, they have been noted as really being one of the many solutions out there that are looking to tackle a problem that no one solution can tackle alone. And I think that's very important for investors to understand. We'll get into the different types of, chem of, of chemistry and approaches uh, that are um, used in today's recycling methods and to understand how using traditional methods of recycling could potentially be problematic in addressing the total overall magnitude of the problem. And some of these quotes here speak to that. The top left from plastics technology talks about Consumer product brand owners increasingly see advanced chemical recycling as a necessary complement to mechanical recycling. Now, we've talked along this front here about mechanical recycling and the high energy input and the high cost of carrying out those methods and how the chemical recycling method that Duro boasts and brings to bear to the industry 
Um, on the onset, um, there are some technologies that are, um, are, are along the process uh, more organically and naturally than Aduro now, uh, being that Aduro has been in the works for all, uh, just a little bit more than a decade, but in the public limelight for the last couple of years. Uh, and we will be lucky patrons of that by discovering the Aduro Clean Technologies platform here with a stock price that does not, in my opinion, reflect its current value as it reflects to the grander plastic problems out there in the marketplace. So it's nice to see that reciprocation by some of the who's who's in the industry. And Forbes quotes, waste plastic is a growing global issue, creating significant demand for recycling and upcycling solutions. Now remember, recycling is completely dif different. Aduro boasts the ability to upcycle their final product that they get from the reactors and actually being able to tweak the chemistry in a way that can be economically beneficial uh, for the end user and the desired output that they want and the desired product that they want to upcycle into when they take the waste plastic that would have just otherwise ended up in a landfill to take those plastics that guys up until now 80 percent has ended up in the landfills because they have not been economically um, viable to recycle nor has the technology existed but the ability to take those hard to recycle plastics and take those and generate a feedstock that can be upcycled into more valuable products is really the value proposition that Aduro brings to the table here. And I think this speaks to it. Existing technologies are challenged with environmental, operational, and economical limitations. Aduro has developed the next gen technology to address these limitations. So I, it's been said many, many times, and we've discussed it for the grander audience, that Aduro isn't expected to save the world here. They are not expected to take on the plastic problem all by themselves. However, the, the, the deeper question is to challenge the idea that Aduro will not find at least a significant portion of the uh, addressable market here in the plastic recycling uh, business. And I'm not saying that a significant amount here is 25% or half or all. I think that that is really, um, it's one of those things that cannot be expected, but I it, think it's going to take a lot of solutions to be brought to bear and to look at the best solution for the problem that the uh, technology is looking to augment to make sure that we can realize our goal of, of a circular economy. And that's really the goal here is to make sure um, that these plastic waste uh, that are being generated in greater amounts per year um, actually have a chance to end up being reintroduced as a plastic product because of uh, innovations like Aduro. And the, the Ted Danson show here as well has been earmarked as one of those uh, major milestones for the company, but I'll skip down to the power of chemistry, and, and, I, and I want to bring your attention here to game-changing and novel. Um, I, I know the CEO, Ofer Vikas, has been a guest on the channel, and he spoke to us about the novelty with the uh, Aduro Clean Technologies um, uh, approach and really bringing forward a solution that does not require high energy inputs, rather relies on the chemistry and the smart deconstruction of the molecule to make sure that the product that is rendered on the back end lends itself useful in an upcycling scenario, a, a circular economy that we're all looking to achieve. Now, this is out of the hydrocarbon processing, guys. This isn't my opinion. I'm looking to pay this forward of in-the-news spots that Aduro earned uh, based on their technology, okay? And this is this is Aduro's investor slide deck. So um, it is incumbent upon us to interpret the information. I would encourage you not to dismiss how big some of these spots are and how diverse uh, this outreach has 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 been uh, really uh, a, a huge accomplishment here by Aduro in such a short amount of time. 
And I think that uh, momentum that they have garnered here and the excitement that they have brought into uh, addressing the plastic problem as acknowledged by these pieces cannot be ignored. And we'll continue to pay those forward as we address the, uh, the catalyst that Aduro um, will inevitably get to, especially over the next couple of years as we bring our three uh, into an engineering phase at the latter portion of 2023. Going into 2024 is going to be another key uh, year in the development of this story, and we will continue to pay those forward as they become available to us. Spend a few moments on this slide. It's super important when we go to the bitumen upgrading. That is actually how Aduro has actually been able to uh, put some earnings and some revenue on the um, on the books, which was exciting. I think when most people are looking to understand the uh, the focus of the company right now, I think it's it's fair to suggest that um, the plastic technology garners a significant amount of excitement and and I know that's um, really where uh, the the laser focus of the company lies right now and rightfully so guys I, I spoke about the high yield low energy uh, input strong environmental benefits of the technology and we skip all the way at the bottom it enables businesses to achieve an ESG leading performance which is what all large businesses right now are looking for. They're looking for those technologies that will allow them to get to an end where they can actually boast their, um, their pledge to the environment in making the critical steps necessary to ensure that they don't get a black eye from producing plastic that inevitably ends up in our landfills. So these large plastic producers, they are hungry, guys. And they are absolutely scouring the landscape right now to, to identify which solutions are going to work with um, their existing businesses. It turns industrial plastic waste into high value products already on site. So we've talked about the upcycling uh, possibility of that. It's modular design. Um, it's fit for uh, B2B. Average six-year payback, which means that once the product is um, augmented into an existing business's operations, that there will be an eventual payback of the system and then an enjoyment of that specific system and all the benefits that come with it. Um, but the initial onset of the initial cost, whether or not the units are uh, deployed at existing facilities, and I think Aduro is probably going to engage more on a licensing model to start to keep that capital expenditure low uh, on the onset. And I'm talking about on the onset from now, 2023, all the way projecting out to 2027 to see how this story is going to unfold. Um, but here, it's worth noting uh, the ex ex incredible opportunity from the patent protection that they have, yes, that is noted here, but also the multiple verticals that we will also continue to, to monitor and cover uh, as the uh, heavy oil upgrading and the bitumen was actually the source of this latest roll of income that was just, uh, or revenues that were just uh, disclosed to investors. So really cool, really exciting times, really a, a, a multifaceted opportunity here with the heavy, up, uh, heavy oil upgrading, the bitumen upgrading on their other two verticals and the focus on what I feel is really the, 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 the most exciting portion of the Aduro story, and that is the, the plastic recycling and upcycling through their hydrochemolytic technology. So the total addressable markets in each of these verticals are uh, worth highlighting here when we talk about the um, hydrochemolytic renewables as it pertains to upgrading and um, the heavy oil recycling. Now, when I visited the facility, Anil Javar, who's the chief scientist at Aduro, talked about this as being one of the one of the key understandings that investors and followers of this story need to understand is that the deconstruction of of uh, macromolecules is common across to all market applications. He said that this isn't just a technology that can be applied to a few things. This is a technology that can absolutely be applied across the board 
as you know, their initial focus was on heavy oil upgrading and the uh, potential for uh, you know um, making the the flow of those uh, of those products and 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 upgrading those uh, processes actually was their first um, application that they used the hydrochemiletic on and look to leverage that when they actually uh, started to pursue the plastic recycling um, application here. But uh, the large addressable markets there on the bottom of the slide really speak to the opportunity here and how they go about pursuing, um, hopefully getting some payback on the plastic recycling within the next couple of years to get uh, a little bit more noted attention. Because all of this really, I think some of the criticism that I hear over Aduro and a lot of these companies right now that if you cannot see through the market volatility um, that is kind of keeping a lot of these good names like Aduro and many others repressed right now in the face of pretty tough markets, um, the, the markets are really demanding that these companies say prove it, you know, prove it. If these companies are so great, eventually they're going to have to make money, okay? They can't just continue to be a wonderful story if the technology is that great and the demand is that great, then show me. And I think it's going to be interesting how that show me story unfolds over the coming couple of years and how they look to uh, focus in on especially the plastic recycling, which is kind of my bias opinion on what they should do. I, I think that's not necessarily in a box. I think that's in line with what the management um, it really is looking to pursue. But these other two verticals are, are very serious with huge addressable markets on their own. And the overarching theme here is that the hydrochemolytic applies to all three and not just one. And I foresee over the coming years massive investment in plastic uh, recycling. And in this particular model showing the uh, licensing model for upcycling plastic, and I really want to bring your attention to the uh, upfront capital expenditure that is expected to be put forward in both of these scenarios. The first being a 25 ton per day at 22,500,000 of initial upfront cost. And to really understand this model, we're going to just compare it to um, the increase in uh, tons annually. Uh, compared to uh, the 225 tons per day. So 25 in the first, 225 tons per day in the second example, and those respective uh, upfront capital expenditures expected to be fronted by the uh, organizations that Aduro is expected to garner some significant interest from. Um, this is a little bit forwards, uh, forward-looking here, guys, in that these... Uh, relationships are really supposed to fortify in the next coming years as the scale up of the reactors that Aduro is working so diligently to bring online to demonstrate to customers how wonderful they work and how these uh, these can be actually achieved and and my understanding is with the potential of the larger commercial phase units these are fairly conservative numbers here guys and I want to also bring to the attention that this is this could be one particular uh, business, one particular large plastic producer, multiplied by however many times over they're able to win over these businesses. But in the top example here, with just a, a mere 8,500 tons annually, with an operating expenditure, again, augmented by the facility that Aduro partners with, is expected to generate just shy of eight million in revenue. And this is one company on a licensing model. And you might think, well, you know, where does Aduro fit into this? Both benefit. This is a symbiotic relationship. This is how a licensing model works. It's been proven to work time and time again, where through deployment of the technology, the companies benefit as well as um, the uh, original patent holder, which in this case would be a Duro. They would take a cool 1.5 million, uh, representing about a 44% gross margin. Very, very impressive with a 6.7 year payback uh, for the facilities that actually partner with a Duro. And this is really, really exciting, guys. 
for the amount of CapEx that is willing to be fronted to put this program in place, um, which I would presume if they're able to see this model through that they would be looking to scale up not only with their existing customers, but also to bring new customers uh, in the line uh, for their initial commissioning of their commercial units, as well as add additional commercial units for existing clients. And you can quickly see how this could really, really snowball quickly for a Duro, uh, basically with uh, no capital uh, upfront expenditure and partnering with these companies that absolutely have the money but are looking more for a solution. I think this partnership makes sense. I think the licensing model makes the most sense. And when we look down at the bottom here for an initial uh, $202 million up front of capital expenditures to build out the reactor, the expected $21 million, close to $22 million of operating expenditure, again, being brought uh, forward, expected to generate just shy of $70 million. Enduro takes, uh, takes home a cool $14 million. Um, in that negotiation with the uh, with the with the revenue at 47 uh, 48 million or so um, gross margins there close to 50 percent you just don't get any better than that with a payoff of just less than six years so very attractive easy sell I, I think Mina Bache is going to have a field day really if those discussions are going to be forthcoming if not already happening now with the duro, this is a very, very simple, straightforward negotiation in making sure that companies are going to have the availability of the chemistry to put into play to generate revenue for themselves. This is about generating revenue for themselves, not to mention we're only talking about revenue. Guys, there are intangible benefits that this slide does not speak to with regard to companies flying the flag of ESG, being able to drive down their company scores, which are all becoming more of the limelight and more of the demand by customers that enjoy these products is to make sure that these companies are, are, are not only doing what they need to do and, and, and also are obligated to do, but also the idea that they can actually um, fly the flag of green and tell people that they are involved in this and that the products that they produce through this technology are introduced into a circular economy. So everybody wins in this, in this particular arrangement. Uh, Aduro is free to set up arrangements with as many businesses as they want, assuming that this slide speaks to one-on-one, -on -one, a ratio between Aduro um, and the licensee really does speak to the exponential uh, profit potential for both the licensee and Aduro as they look to scale up for new customers and existing customers alike. Some of these recent achievements we've already announced through the channel, but it is certainly worth uh, putting some light on this Aduro slide that they've provided in their recent slide deck. Over the recent achievements, they've just closed the uh, recent 3.92 and million pri uh, million in private placement. Um, we that was in the news. There was uh, news releases on that, and congratulations to Aduro uh, for being able to raise such a, a, a significant amount of money. Um, these guys are very conservative in their approach. I, I just love how they operate. Their upper management is just right on the money. Um, they don't burn capital. Uh, they don't spend money frivolously. Um, they've got a, 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 a track record of setting forth uh, milestones that are achievable and, and reachable, and, and they deliver. It's just that simple, and um, share owners in the company have been uh, rewarded thus far. And, you know, for a company that is sporting a $60 million market cap, actually it's CAD um, here in the States, it's about $45 million U.S., which is where I'm domiciled in and represent the audience of uh, U.S. investors here introducing the Aduro Clean Technology story. Um, these significant uh, milestones are worth noting, especially the Shell Game Changer program. Um, I'm extremely excited to see how they're able to leverage the relationships. Yeah, to seek out some of the funding, I think that's great, but I think there's going to be a lot more intangible benefit um, in way of the collaboration with a company like Shell. And I think that is going to pay dividends for years and years down the line. I, I think that's going to be something that 
is able to blossom. I think some people glaze over it when they read that headline and they don't truly understand the potential magnitude and even multi-decade magnitude that the Shell Game Changer could actually mean for uh, early share owners in the company. Like myself, um, they have expanded the uh, shareholder engagements. Um, I am part of that engagement and trying as hard as I can to provide some transparency on the Aduro story, um, and, and, and we will continue to do that gladly. But um, you can see here how the list of milestones and recent achievements are, are, are really second to none. And congratulations to the Aduro team um, for the number of milestones over such a short amount of time. So I, I kicked off this investor slide deck with um, telling you guys that this is probably um, in the calm before the storm. And I don't know how long this calm period is going to last. I have no problem with it. Um, I've got the stock in somewhat of a trading range, and I'm absolutely comfortable with purchasing stock at these levels in between the low uh, 60 cent and, and maybe even upwards of the high 80 percent level. I, I think it does not speak to the current value. I think that the commissioning and the near completion of the bitumen unit here, which I've seen both of these in person, um, I was able to, to visit the site. Um, at um, uh, in Sarnia and the uh, those videos are broken up into a three-part series I would invite you to catch those because I'm actually able to put you right there front and center I, I've put my hands on these units I've I've seen them up front and in person and I can tell you uh, first and foremost they're impressive the completion of the R2 plastic pilot it's been done for a while but the final certifications have just uh, come through and they are ready for customer engagements. Very, very exciting. That's on the plastic side of the house. And then the bitumen upgrading with the pilot and flash drum. Those are nearing completion here. Uh, I've seen both of these units and exciting times here um, to see these actually uh, pay forward uh, what they were intended to do through their customer engagement. All right, so Aduro doesn't screw around with their information. And I would insist that you just take a few moments and really interpret this information. Unlike some of the other companies that I cover, Aduro actually does what they say that they're going to do. And in the microcap space, you have to be very leery of what's being said and what is not being followed through with. Aduro is one of those rare companies that I find that they make pretty sizable goals and they actually follow through and they actually achieve the goals that they set forward. Now, this is a pretty, a pretty aggressive time frame here for what they're putting uh, in play here. In May of 2023, we're talking about the first territory hub outside of Canada. Um, we're talking about Mexico. We're talking about the design, engineering, and planning of the R3. That, that is a phenomenal uh, uh, earmark for 2023, and I have no doubt, um, having sat across from the CEO over Vicus and understanding how steadfast he is and seeing this story unfold in the manner that he is declaring to share owners and would-be patrons to the story, um, this 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 will be achieved in some capacity. Now, I'm not promising you down to the hour and down to the date um, via month that this is how it unfolds because these these are pretty lofty goals. They really are. They're talking about here in 2024 the design and engineering at the beginning for R4 and then the second ter territory outside of Canada being in the Netherlands. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm significantly excited about both Mexico and Netherlands because I see significantly differing market application. I see a little bit more smaller application, a little bit more isolated, a little bit more of the, the, the modular application, which is a phenomenal opportunity for Duro. In other words, they can go anywhere and provide their solution to the companies that seek out those solutions, but Mexico and Netherlands doesn't get any more differing than that. And it's exciting to see how that's going to unfold over the next one year, guys. We're talking about 12 months. If you want to talk about the calm before the storm right now, where I see most people complaining about the budge in the stock market, you know, the stock market not moving. Look, if you're of the belief that the stock market will never go up again and that the highs that we saw 
you know, uh, three years ago are going to be the ultimate highs all time and we'll never see those again, then that's your prerogative. I'm not one of those. I think we are on the precipice of a shift in history where ESG and the uh, uh, solutions and the obligations of companies have to actually identify with the solutions that will work. And Aduro is looking to fill that niche. And I think over the coming years, it's really going to be interesting as we start to march toward um, that, 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 EBITDA, that EBITDA profit break even where um, Aduro is making enough of those licensing revenues to really build the, 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 the program out. What an amazing opportunity to have the ability to expand your business and really leverage the relationship and collaboration with existing industry by deploying their plan over the next couple of years and not really having to expel a lot of ex uh, capital expenditure to do so. And this timeline really speaks to a very robust timeline going into as we approach 2027 um, and seeking that break even for uh, profitability for a Duro. We're in the phase here in the graph here toward the left when we talk about pro forma financial forecasts. Is it going to unfold like this? I, I, I don't know. I, I think the astute investor needs to kind of look at what Aduro is looking to communicate in this, in this grid. Um, I think we're all the way to the left here, May of 2023. Okay, we're losing a little bit of money. Relatively speaking, we have... Um, non-reoccurring revenue that are being placed on the books with their customer trials. In other words, this is not the licensing model that we spoke about. However, when we look at the 2025 timeline here, which is just two years from this point here, we're talking about an estimate of 14.3. Now, let me put that into con context for a second. When we go back to each unit, uh, being able to produce uh, an 8,500 ton per annum uh, output, that 14.3 represents, in my mind, 10 units across 10 customers or 10 units in aggregate uh, amongst X number of, of, of potential customers. In other words, it doesn't matter if all 10 are with, are with one client or we have 10 8,500 units with... Um, 10 different clients. It doesn't matter. In the aggregate, it still means that the 14.3 of reoccurring revenue, now this is reoccurring every single year, guaranteed as those companies that they work with is working toward their uh, 6.7 year payback. Remember, we talked about that. But as soon as 2025 to be generating uh, some profit there at a 50% gross margin, it will be an absolute re-rack of this company. Where it will be at that particular juncture, I, I, I have no idea. And I don't really care. I'm buying this company that I'm disclosing to you there in 2025. Now, in 2023, when nobody's talking about it. I'm talking about it. A few others on YouTube are talking about it. But I'm buying the company for what it's going to be in 2025, not for what it is now. It's the way I've always thought about investing. I have profited greatly from thinking this way. And even if it doesn't materialize exactly the way Aduro is projecting here, um, which I think 10 units by 2025 is more than, than, uh, than expected. It could be the R3 or R4 potential commissioning, right, that can actually uh, turn out that 8,500 tons per annum that is being estimated uh, on the top end of the licensing model, right? But when we start to shift to the right and we start to bring on multiple commercial units, okay? Now, I don't know if that initial push is going to be 10. I just get that from taking 1.4 million of estimate per unit and timesing it by 10. If Aduro is saying, look, we've got 14.3 of potential reoccurring licensing model revenue, uh, in 2025. Hell, I don't care if they get one. One is going to be incredible. 2425, I hold a stock right now that's, you know, losing money, uh, engaging and starting that engagement of, of, of customer outreach now 
using their R2 commissioned units. And and to be able to project to 10, I, I think if they were to get to one, I think that would be a success. I think 10 would be a home run. Now it starts to get even more exciting when we kick it out an additional year. And they're talking about you know, tripling that estimate of initial commercial units to 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 up that to in this case I have to use 30 as a round number for us to think about. Now could in 2026 we be talking about multiple facilities out there that have interest in and have started to ground break on commercial units at their respective facilities? Guys, if you think that this is completely off base I would kindly remind you to look at the potential of what they're sitting on right now. All right. We know the technology works. We know that it can be scaled. Okay. We know that the R2 is ready to start selling the hydrochemiletic process in a way that can be demonstrated through outreach. This, this is very, very realistic. And when we talk out to 2027 here, which is just a mere four years from now, I think we are going to be reflecting back on these times as somewhat silly because if I were going to affix a number to that 95 million of reoccurring revenue, we are only talking about a potential there for around, what did I say, 10 to 30 tripling up and then doubling from there, which is close to 60 units. 60 reactors that we've got working and and with the low end of the reactor this could be during the r4 and r5 phase where we're starting to bring in some of those larger units on the bottom end of the licensing model i'm just using the top end model at the 8500 tons per annum to estimate you know where we could potentially expand now that's how it plays out from a rudimentary sense is it going to unfold that way? Chances are no. But if we're using what Aduro is projecting to us, this is very, very exciting in getting the ball rolling, getting those initial units and those customer engagements uh, brought in-house and really start the discussion and try to define on the landscape who are going to be those initial onset players. Those initial onset players are going to really help contribute to the initial commercial units. And then that should really help really snowball and start some momentum in the industry. Because the last thing that big industry wants to see is that industry have an advantage through leveraging with technology. And I actually anticipate some organic demand over Aduro made possible by no part on their own rather by referential business that is made possible by the success of the system that has already been validated um, here and looking to scale up. So really, it's just a patience game at this point to identify what we're looking at for opportunity and expected revenues as they unfold over the next coming years. So 60 million CAD of market cap, I would estimate here in the U.S. about 45 million here to reflect for the exchange difference. One thing I really want to point your attention to is the unprecedented, and I do mean unprecedented, 43% of, of, of insider ownership. That, that, is, that is incredible. Now, if you're lucky enough to find a Duro shares, which you're not going to be able to find it on all brokers, um, I will tell you now that shares can be purchased on interactive brokers open. It can be purchased with an assisted trade through Charles Schwab, and most easily obtained by our brokers uh, in Fidelity, as well as TD Ameritrade, uh, and finally E-Trade. Those are the brokers that I understand are uh, have made this available. Um, I can tell you that Merrill, which is my current broker, does not currently allow you to buy shares. Uh, and Charles Schwab that I mentioned, you cannot bring up the U.S. ticker traded on OTCQB, ACTHF. You can't even recall the ticker uh, on that particular broker. You actually actually have to call them. And I understand that there's been some tutorials of some folks finding some success in obtaining some of the shares. But 43%, that's insane. Um, that is absolutely insane, unprecedented in understanding that you are aligning with industry um, in this opportunity. And the way that I've expressed it to unfold over the next four or five years is nothing short of exciting. Whether or not it's going to unfold the way that I have demonstrated that it could potentially unfold 
Um, it could could unfold in a completely different manner to the upside. It could be slower to integration than what we've disclosed today. That is not the point. The point is to understand that right now, rest assured, we are in the calm before the storm. In aligning your potential interest in this company now before that 2024, 2025, 2026, and inevitably 2027, and being in a position of reflection and looking back over this company here in May of 2023 and asking ourselves, why the hell didn't I take a position in Enduro Clean Technologies? And for you guys that have stayed with me this long, I mean, this this could be a life-changing opportunity, and I commend you for staying with me, doing your own research, um, seeking out the EnduroCleanTech.com uh, website, and, and finding and reviewing this information on your own leisure. The whole uh, idea behind a YouTube video is to introduce you. Um, if you're interested, you're interested. If you're not, no problem. Um, the idea here is to um, uh, spur up some interest in all interested parties, and they can go on and see what I've uh, seen for myself. And this slide speaks to it. And in summary, why invest now? Because this is the calm before the storm. Okay, These things right here that Aduro have displayed for would-be investors uh, on their investor slide deck are very, very real. Um, these are not uh, fabricated. These are very real. And I'll go over just a few of them right now. Unique patented next generation technology independently validated. That's their technology specifically. All right. If it's going to work and it's going to be scaled and it's going to help solve the plastic problem, it has to work. And investors have to make sure that they understand the technology, understand the difference in the technology as it compares to the rest of the industry and making sure that they understand how, in fact, Aduro is looking to augment uh, the big industry with their hydrochemilytic technology, okay? High yields of greater than 80% of operating margins, nearing 50%. Absolutely fantastic. The engagement in the Shell Game Changer is to provide testing and technical expertise to advance the HCT technology in commercial implementation, guys. This, excite this story was exciting before Shell came along. Okay, they could have got this with proper funding, but having the backing of Shell Oil is absolutely, absolutely a solidification of Aduro's technology and their ability to bring them to commercial status even fortifies further the graphs that I talked about and the licensing model that I discussed. I think it's almost a foregone conclusion that they reach somewhat, if not in part, or uh, on par with what they are disclosing and I think have a pretty good shot of actually surpassing what they're projecting for revenue projections over the next four years with 2027 being a target with having Shell Game Changer uh, all along with them in helping them augment their commercial implementation. Ongoing discussions with other potential customers. This is huge. Aduro would not disclose this. This is fantastic. When I read this with my lens, I couldn't help but get excited to understand across seven countries, seven, including Fortune 500 companies. This is not small potatoes. This is a $45 million market cap company right now making huge waves, not just in Canada, but globally looking to expand their global reach and really hit this hard when they start this snowball rolling it will not be the calm before the storm which we are in right now this company is being dismissed in the marketplace it is being missed and for the people who identify it as a swing and a miss by the market it happens all the time it is guys like myself who identify these misalignments in the market and these uh, imperfections in the market a dural right now is an imperfect application in, in the market where they have tried to value companies like PureCycle in the excess of $1 to $1.5 billion in a position like PureCycle that doesn't make any revenue as we speak now. With the revenue projections that I just talked about over the coming four years, the question is where is Aduro going to be with the companies that they are engaging with right now as disclosed by Aduro 
across the for Fortune 500 landscape. And I think with the assistance of the Shell Game Changer program, I think that got more people's attention that they are being given credit for. Uh, and I will be the beneficiary of that by taking an early position in this company as disclosed in the description below. I've provided you my entry to the stock and the size and position of each respective stock by as it's transpired since November of 2022 of last year. Um, we've got successful achievement of 2022 goals, providing the building blocks necessary to achieve 2023 goals. I think that's great. I think it really speaks to Aduro and their ability to um, follow through and actually achieve that the goals that they've set forth. Um, I have no reason to question the credibility of this company. They they put forth information, they they knock uh, uh, goals out of the park, and they set new goals. Uh, for 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 the future and I do agree that they're building upon a very very sound base uh, to leverage their position going into 2024 25 26 and 27 uh, respectively revenue ramp up uh, and expectations of annual reoccurring revenue that's the licensing model that we spoke at of of 90 million with EBITDA margins of 80 percent by year five that's just that's just stupid silly guys that's stupid silly it's going to be stupid silly uh, to watch this position swell in value um, where a small amount in the company right now can really make a significant difference um, if they're able to realize margins uh, of that capacity and, and really start to put and implement this technology um, into the rigor of, 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 of big plastic producers. Over 10 years of experience with total capital resources invested in the technology and IP to date of 50 million. I say this all the time, 50 million have been invested in bringing this technology to where we are now today 50 million okay and you can own the stock for 66 cents you can own the stock for 66 cents there's been 50 million dollars invested in bringing this technology to where we love and enjoy right now only to be dismissed by this current market i think they're missing something and we will be the beneficiaries of that mismatch in the market we must be patient we must monitor carefully and we must deploy diligently our application in identifying the opportunity here with the Duro. But if I, I think if you look at it with the lens that I've looked at, I think you'll agree that the opportunity is unmatched and unparalleled throughout the plastic recycling space. And finally, it's undervalued with comparable valuations north of a billion. Uh, I think those are, are fair. I, I think a Duro is really going to set itself far, uh, far and apart um, in realizing over the next coming years, look, I mean, if they're able to realize in part the revenue projections that they have over the next coming years, we're not talking about a $1 billion company here. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar company here um, because the profit potential can only be anticipated to grow organically as they expand their portfolio of clients which would be expected with the volume ramp up that each of these respective businesses want to achieve through deploying the Aduro technology and, and the solution that they bring to bear. Um, so the company is significantly undervalued with a $50 million market cap. That's a smart way of saying, or, or, or an above board way of saying that right now the valuation is laughable. Uh, it's laughable. I don't put any merit whatsoever on what credence the market has uh, has has brought to bear in in identifying a duro at a forty five uh, million dollar market cap right now with the technology alone we're talking about a two hundred and fifty to three hundred million dollar and that's a conservative market cap um, so we're we're talking about a significant a significant ramp up of current market cap conditions and once that market cap starts to increase to the hundred million the two fifty million. That's when the notoriety for the larger companies are going to start to set in and Adura will be made more available uh, on the grander marketplace, especially here in the United States. The brokers that serve uh, service the com uh, company and make the ticker symbol available through our U.S. brokers. You know, unlike a lot of companies um, that I that I cover, the access to the Adura team uh, couldn't be more understated. Um, tell them Ryan sent you. Um, because I tell you what, Ofer Vikas is one of the most um, uh, devote CEOs that I that I work with in the landscape and paying stories forward. 
Um, and finally, uh, Abe Dick there, the head of corporate development. You can reach out to either one of those guys. You can reach out to me on the video, leave your comments. Um, I know the Aduro team does monitor uh, the comment section um, with regard to each and every digital property that I put on the Independent Investor channel, but certainly want to vid visit adurocleantech.com. Save it in your favorites. It should be a website that you absolutely keep up on news releases because I tell you what, guys, you better strap on your seatbelt because over the next four years, there is going to be some exciting developments with this company, mark my word now. It is a brave position that I am taking on this company when nobody else is talking about it. The grand Mr. Market has not properly assessed the real opportunity here. It is absolutely being missed. And what is being missed and earmarked as imperfection in the market can absolutely be a money maker for those investors that get in early, they identify the opportunity, and they're patient enough to wait it through. Guys, appreciate you tuning in for the totality. We'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the investor slide deck, and I want to uh, thank you for your time. Um, usually an, an eight to 10 minute YouTube video um, is appropriate for uh, keeping people's attention with no attention span. Aduro doesn't deserve that. They, they deserve our full attention. And when the content is released through other social media means, Common Sense Investing just released a, a phenomenal piece of content. Passive Income Investor does a good job as well as finally Mariusz Kanochki, who does a fantastic job of providing the information. And this information is meant to educate. I would invite you to adurocleantech.com, which is the company's website. All the information is there. The investor slide deck used in the making of this video is there. I would encourage you to spend some minutes. If you're into investing and you're into making money and you're into identifying those names out there that are currently undiscovered in the landscape, a Duro Clean Technology absolutely fits that bill. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. Leave your comments at the bottom. Hit the notification bell and subscription to the Independent Investor Channel if you enjoy content like this and much more. Guys, thank you so much again and good luck in your investment future.